Driving the Culture Forward. This is High Peace Radio. My name is Ben Rosen, and today we are sitting here with William Strobeck, director, Yo. videographer, Skate World's kind of documentarian. How are you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much for finding some time. Coming down to the office, it's snowing outside. It's a mess. So I know. It was really... hard to get here. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I thought I was going to be on time, but uh, the, the car, there was like traffic jams and shit it's a nightmare it's you up. live nearby right are you in i live in the east village oh okay yeah. cool how long have you been there for because you've been in new york uh, been there for, for eight years yeah i've been here for like 15 or 16 years or something now wow so you've seen like new york change without a, a doubt yeah, yeah. I, th- I think about it every day yeah yeah well, it's pretty crazy what, what was like this what's your story of coming to new york like uh, wait, wait actually let's start even earlier first of all where are you from originally I'm from uh, right outside of Syracuse, New York. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and so you came here? I moved to Philadelphia from uh, from there. I, uh, I Skateboarding really got me to where everywhere I'm at today, really, basically. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I went to Philadelphia to go skate with all my friends that I grew up with, and we all went down, and then... Uh, we went down a couple of times because our friend went to college at uh, UPenn mm-hmm. and we went to hang out with him because he lived there and the scene in Philadelphia was like the shit basically. So we went down there to skate and I uh, met this girl there and ended up moving there like seriously like a like year later or something. Like a boy meets world kind yeah, of story. I met a, I met a girl there, and then like I was like, gonna move right away. I was like so hyped, and then uh, and I was seventeen, so I was like really young. But she made me get my GED before I I came down there, so I That's smart. So I doubled up on classes so I could get through it quicker. Yeah. And I got my GED the day I got my GED. I jumped on a Greyhound and went down there. Wow, you just picked up and left. Passion, man. Passion, man. And so wait, so you went to Philly. How long were you there for? Uh, I was there for seven years. Wow. So you said we split, I, when then we split up and then I moved right to New York cause all my friends lived here. So I, all the kids I grew up with didn't go to Philly. They came here. I was going to say, you I, don't have to get another GED. You just get on no, the bus here. I, I literally was just, my friends lived here. They had an open room and I had, I had money cause I was filming and stuff. So I was just like, I'm moving there. So I just broke out and came here and it was fucking so fun. Like, cause I was like used to just working and not going, I was like super serious about what I was doing when I was in Philly. Right. Like, so I was just nonstop. Like it was like day, then at night with generators lighting up things. Like I was just like, so about it. But when we, when, uh, me and my first girlfriend split up, it was just like, uh, like coming here, it was like a whole new world. Like I just kind of like caught up on all the stuff that I like kind of missed out on. Like I was like out partying every night and just just it was so fucking wild here i was gonna say this is new york back in the day when things were i mean wild back in my day i mean there there was plenty of times before i moved here that were like obviously looked so fun like even like from like the late 60s on like it looked so sick here but when i moved here it was still like really really like gritty a little gritty yeah but it was like the, the the like it was gritty, but it was like you could tell like it was changing right. to be like I mean, as soon as the internet came in, it like really changed a lot of shit here. Yeah. So yeah. who were you filming for when you were in Philly? Because you were you were you've been uh, was, doing video work for quite a long time. Right? Yeah. Next this next uh, 2018, it's 20 years. Wow. Yeah. That's Which like is a, crazy. Like yeah, that's like a landmark. That's yeah, like a personal a long, landmark. Long time. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, filming for Alien Workshop. Right, because you, like, you helped out with the, uh, with photosynthesis yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that was the first like big video that I worked on. I was just in the right place at the right time. I think always, I've always yeah. just like gravitated towards things that I think are cool or like whatever. Like, just like I don't know. I just, so, what drew you to Alien Workshop? Was it like Dill and Ave at the time? Or no, Mike it Hill? wasn't. It wasn't that. It was just that I was just in Philly, and jo- Josh Kalis lived there, and I would just film him every now and then. And eventually, he was like, "Hey, man, we're gonna work on this video. Like, uh, you want to help?" Like, and I was like, "Sure." They started paying me, and I was it was on. Like, you know, I was psyched too, because like, you know, some of the kids I was filming, like. They were kids that I like fucking like had photos of them on my wall and shit. You know right, what I mean? Like, yeah, when yeah, I, like idols. Know, it was just like crazy. Like it's hard to explain, but like, like pro skaters when I was younger were like way more famous to me than like anybody that was in like movies or anything. I, I just like was like 
in awe of some of them at first you know what i mean like yeah. when you're just like holy shit like i'm hanging out you know it's just a young kid shit you know yeah, i was gonna you know, ask because it's like back then like if you like th- this was like this was dill's heyday this is like yeah Pete, and when i first Jason met dill, dill and dill was so fucking cool when i first met him like he wasn't like standoffish or like a dick like he was so fucking cool with me like out the gate that I didn't even feel like weird about hanging out with him or anything. He was just fucking dope, you know what I mean? He still is, but he was like, he was just so fucking cool and chill, you know? It wasn't like a fucking, like, a dude you meet and you're like, oh, that dude's kind of a dick because he thinks he's cool. Like, he was just so outgoing and, like, rad, you know? So And you're, and you're coming up on, like, 20 years of working alongside the dude now. Pretty much, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, for sure. Like we, I mean, we still talk like every day or other day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he'll, he'll get a text. I'll get a text from him of something funny, or he'll call me, or like whatever. Like if I go to LA, I'm like kicking it with. You know, he's just like uh, like. I was gonna ask what kind of, kind of texter is Jason Dill. You know what I mean? He's good. Yeah. yeah. He. I mean, you can only imagine, but like when it's like not like in front of people like he's so funny like you know what i mean he's just like he'll hit me with like a funny ass text like check this shit out or something you know it's just it's just like on a like a we we connect really well yeah like, yeah and i so, mean it can only we could only like keep this going if we didn't connect like in a certain way you know what i mean like right. we just like naturally are fucking cool with each other yeah and so when you picked up and you moved from philly to new york back in the day what were you up to when you first met? Like you said, you were partying, kind of catching up on. I just the literally wild like lifestyle. got. I like kind of like fell out of not fell out of skating, but when I came up here, I met so many. Like in Philly, it was like I hung out with skateboarders, you know, and then right. like sometimes like graffiti dudes and like and like hardcore kids and stuff because that was real big in Philly too. But I moved up here and I met a whole new crew of people that didn't skateboard so like if i wasn't doing that i was out hanging out with like you know people that did other shit which inspired me and kind of influenced things for me in a different way really Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i don't know i just kind of like hung out with so many other people that i didn't even care about skating really that much like if i did it it was cool like i got a paycheck like whatever i was kind of like not working that much you were a freelancer i was kind of i was like just a free spirit kind of i came out you could come up here and you could be who you wanted to be really like you kind of just like let go and just like the city moved me in a way that like uh it just did what it wanted with me really yeah and so you and you're like floating around for a little bit but then how did you get involved with supreme at the time uh i wasn't involved with supreme until 2011 or 12 really so uh, when i moved here was 2003 Right. So I was like, like I needed money. Like Dill would loan me money. He would mm-hmm. pay my rent sometimes. Like, like you know, I lived with roommates, so it was like, oh man, I'm so broke. Like whatever. He was like, come on, meet up with me. Let's go eat. Like he was just that cool, you know. And uh, I wasn't working as much. And then Workshop started working on a video. Well, DVS worked on a video, so I helped Dill out with his part with that. And then Workshop was, like, doing Minefield, so I worked with Dill on that. Like, and and, uh, Jake Johnson, really, because they were the only ones that were out here. And then, uh, eventually, like, yeah, I just did... I I started doing my own videos online, and I think that's where it, like, turned for me. Like, really, because I was, like... I was, like, working for other companies, you know. I was working for companies, so they were just... I was filming for them, and they were doing what they wanted. But then, like, I worked on this video with Anthony Pappalardo, uh, the uh, Lakai video, and and they didn't use half the footage that I filmed. Oh, that's from Fully Flared, right? Yeah, they they used what they wanted, but there was a lot of footage they didn't use. So when that video came out, I was kind of sitting on a lot of footage of Anthony, so I just was like... Dude, I'm just gonna make something and put it online. And this is like right when like online kind of was like you know, I was YouTube say, this was, was probably kicking. like Vimeo was very much a yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't even know point. if Vimeo was even around then. I think it was just YouTube really. Right. So I made this video with him and put it out, and it was kind of just the way that I wanted to see, like the way that I wanted to do it. And and I literally got like the feedback was so crazy, and I kind of like I don't know, just kind of got high off it. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna make another one then, you know, like kind of doing my own thing and like representing skating the way that I wanted to see it. And, uh, I, uh, just continued with that. And eventually like I started working for, for somebody. And then I 
did my own part for a trans world video and then from there like that video came out and then my friend kyle that i grew up with who works at is supreme like start just started right then he was like hey would you want to like try to do a commercial for us like a little like web commercial kind of thing and i was like yeah for sure so i went out with dill and then ty sean who was just real young at the time like right. yeah, i think he was 13 and i made a video with those two for over a weekend and we i put it out and it turned out like great and james was like real hyped on it and and then it was just like what do you think about doing a full length i was like let's do it like kind of like and it was that easy kind of it was way. kind of well we had you know we had to have meetings and yeah, go yeah, in yeah. and kind of like represent like present it right but I was going to say, like, what was the pitch? Like, what, what, what was your kind of elevator pitch for Cherry? It was just like, Cherry? hey, man, like, you guys haven't had anything in skating really that much, you know? And, like, what about doing a video? Like, and I think that's, like, you know, for James, who, you know, I just, I didn't know, you know, it seemed like, uh, it just seemed like the right time for them to make a video. And I was like, let's do this. Like, I don't know, here's what we think. Like, here's, like what we want the vibe to be and like you know with a skate video you don't know what you're gonna get you know what i mean it isn't like it you can't just be like plan it out and it happens like yeah. you get what you get you know what i mean you're out in the streets every day you might run into somebody you might get hit by a car like you don't know what's gonna happen so it isn't like a movie where like each shot's planned out like you get what you get in the streets and that's what you get and fortunately for me i have like such a fucking dope crew like that they're just so entertaining and good personalities and they all look cool. So like usually with with that it comes, you know, comes like great shit, you know. Yeah. So like I don't know if I would have made it where I've made it without filming the people that I filmed since the beginning. You know what I mean? I always had like the sickest kids to film, you know. And yeah. I, I'm like for me to look back on that, I'm like, I'm so fucking psyched, you know what I mean? Because I'm a small town kid, you know what I mean? And, and like, I came into an industry of shit that I just like looked up to and like flipped through magazines and seeing all the, you know, all those dudes. And it's pretty fucking it's surreal. Right? I don't know. It's like, I don't know. For some reason, I just, I guess I have a, the personality that's really easy to kick it with and like I'm pretty open minded and. I just kind of like ran into the right people throughout this whole thing. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty fucking psyched on that. You and know? like, and I, I was just like for preparation, it's like I was rewatching Cherry and I think like what you're saying kind of shows through in the style of it. Cause yeah. it's like you, your style for that video in particular is that nobody really gets their own part. It's yeah. more like a collage. Like it's all one yeah. long friends and family. Well, part. I just, you know, if you make it into a part, it kind of like, it's like when, Whenever I saw parts and videos, I would always go to like one part and watch it. Like after, I'd be like, "Oh, I just want to watch like that one trick." Know, yeah, I, I want to just watch like this dude's part. I don't really care about some of the other dudes. In this way, it's kind of like you have to watch it. You want to see the one trick? You got to watch that like section or whatever. You know, I, I, I think also that and unknowing who's going to be next in the next clip, like for me, is just keeps it like it's like having a VHS tape or something like. Yeah. You got to like watch it. You know what I mean? It's like you can't. I like the surprise. And, and that team is super young, too. Like the Supreme yeah, team is they're like young. one of the uh, younger. They're still so young now. I'm like, are you, you've been like 17 for like eight years. Like, what the hell? Like, grow up already. They're like just Tyshawn's 18. He's turning 19 this month. But they've been so young forever. I don't know. They, I mean, when you watch the videos, aren't like, even in, like, aren't even old enough to like drink or anything, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, if you uh, like that one bit where, uh, it's like, I'm 13 years old, but yeah. I got the looks, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Jesus. Like 13 and had confidence like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of 13 year olds will like, be like shy around, you know, pretty girl or whatever. But like, he was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, he just like was raised that way you know yeah he's got such he's so confident it's crazy yeah i, I saw the someone had it on like an instagram story like last week where it's like he's literally jumping over a trash can like yeah. ollieing over a trash can in yeah, front of no, the store he, it's just like yeah which is sick it's so sick they're skating in front of the store you know yeah that's like some 90s shit yeah know? how is that how has that been watching the like the shop kind of like because 2011 is kind of like the perfect time to pitch that because in a lot of ways the brand kind of got 
huge around that time. It got really big. Right, like I feel like when we were promoting the, the video and when the video dropped, I feel like there were skaters in that line again. You know what I mean? Like not that there weren't, but definitely like kids that skated wanted to be these kids. You know what I mean? Or like have the same vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was what was so like priceless about the video is that we kind of introduced these kids and these kids just hung out at the shop they weren't like big skaters or anything they just were around and it was like organic to like have them in the video like i don't even know if like i filmed the video for like a year and then these kids kind of were like hanging out and i was like hey just come out with us like one day like you're fucking cool looking like you seem cool like and then those kids kind of were like, what's up? Where are you at? Where are you at? Like, just wanted to do it. And then it just turned into me, like, really working with them more than anyone. And they were just wanted to, they just were, like, down to skate. They still are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they are, like, out skating every day. Like, they like kicking it with each other and skating, you know? Yeah, so, I, mean, we, uh, I mean, we've seen Knock and some of the other guys just literally hanging out, like, three blocks up from here yeah like right by the triangle or whatever yeah so it's like they are still here like they all still do the exact same thing yeah it, it's it's cool man because it's like crazy enough for these kids that since they were in that video they all got hooked up after the video came out yeah. like they were all like some got on converse some got on adidas and it was like pretty crazy to just see them like get real shine like have you, have you ever just heard, being involved they got hooked up really too you know did you I mean? hear about that uh there was like this great someone was talking about it where like uh basically for some reason everybody in the cherry video is wearing converse one stars did you ever hear about this like the the thing where it was like did you, that all of the members of the supreme team wearing the cons like the one stars basically made it a cool shoe again uh i didn't know about the the one star well they converse came back with the one stars and the one stars were fucking sick like back in the day like yeah. those were sick and like fucking kurt cobain wore them and yeah. like, you're like dude i want a pair you know and they were just like cool looking like classic looking but the 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 chuck taylor which like Every, throughout the years there's always like a crew that wears them and then everyone wears them like the strokes wore them and then fucking everyone in new york had them like everyone yeah. wanted to be those dudes but it was like pretty funny to see like these kids skating in them like actually skating in them which people weren't doing for right it was, years it was the chuck taylor's since, right? yeah like since like i don't know like 91 like no one wore chuck taylor's anymore it was like oh like you know shoes got real beefy at one point yeah, and then the they, osiris like, era yeah just like <clears throat> but it's like it's sick to, they were wearing them like for real. You know what I mean? Like they weren't like, oh, I should just wear them. And like maybe people, they were like skating in them. And I was like, oh, these kids look cool. Like Sean, Pablo look, and Sage, they just like ran those things like on the real. And fucking, uh, after it came out, it was like a lot of skaters started wearing them. Yeah, it it was it like back. funny, dude. It was like, it was cool though. Like they, they kind of inspired people to run them again. It's yeah. like my favorite, my other favorite like skate video conspiracy theory is that like if you wear a yellow t shirt or whatever, you've, you've heard this one, right? It's I don't like know. there's like this theory that's like, oh, if you wear like a yellow t shirt or whatever in your part over and over again, there's like this theory that's like, you probably wound up winning skater of the year and they ran through the years. <laughs> probably, it, it, It's like my favorite, like one of those, like, and then there was like a thing where like some brand a couple years back made like sure. a specifically yellow t-shirt. Like, it, like, cause even at Supreme, it's like, it's yeah. one of the only colors that ever sits. Like, yeah. it's like one of those ones where it's like, nah, I don't need a yellow shirt. Yeah. Yeah. But for whatever reason, like someone, some, it's just like, bright enough to get everyone's attention. And some skate nerd was like looking at all of the old videos and was like why is everybody wearing a yellow shirt and why do they all win yeah and it turned into like this like industry conspiracy theory that's funny yeah um yellow was like i feel like the shirt like a long time ago like companies couldn't just afford shit really you know what i mean it was like i feel like they were like oh look give me the batch of like weird colored shirts because yeah, they're like fucking <laughs> five dollars cheaper so we'll just like make these you know and then, like, in the early 2000s, like, everyone was wearing, like, yellow and shit like that. You know, like, fucking aesthetics and those brands. Like, something like, that stands was, like, out on like, Instagram. Yellow. Yeah, something that, like, just pops out. So what has it been like watching, like, someone that moved here in 2008, helped out through that, like, kind of crazy pivotal period? What has it been like watching Supreme kind of go from a skate shop to this 
massive corporation sort of not they're not a corporation but you know what i mean like this phenomenon it's just like is it weird like is there i don't even like i don't find anything weird anymore because yeah. everything's so fucking like uh like everything's so seen now you know like everything so when i think something's weird i can't it's not even weird like anymore really anything i don't know it's weird to think that but I was saying this the other night, how like lucky I feel to be born in the late late seventies and see like the eighties and the nineties and like before the internet and then see the internet. Like I think that is just so amazing. It's like I look at like someone like Tyshawn. I'm like, you were born when there was like you were born in the after nine eleven. Yeah. He was born right before nine eleven, but it was he wasn't old enough to know what nine eleven was. I don't think I'm not sure. If he was, it might have been two years old, but but um. He grew up in an in an age where he was born into like basically using an iPhone at the or something like a little before that, but like he was like you know he knows so much about like inner like uh like using the phone and like how to use it like so much that I learned shit from those guys really you know yeah which is crazy like new music I don't know anything about new music I still like listen to the shit I listened to like when I was younger or something but. And here and there, I'll like hear something and like it, but like a lot of times I don't. But they know every fucking dude that's coming up in music. They know it's crazy. But I did when I was younger too. I knew everything about yeah. like whatever, like hardcore music. I knew about like the upcoming bands and stuff. And like it's crazy. But when you get to a certain age, it's like I'll listen to the radio like on some grandpa shit. Like I'll listen <laughs> to like, NPR. Yeah, I'll listen to not even that. I'll just like put on the classic rock station and I'll listen to every song and I'm like, I like every song now. But when I was younger, I'd be like, dude, I hate all this music. Like, why is my mother listening to this on the way to the fucking grocery store? And now but, you're singing but along now the I'm journey. Like, now, yeah, now I'm like fucking pumping it. Like, <laughs> it's funny, man. So I think it? when you get older, you just get like more sensitive to like everything and just kind of let go about a bunch of shit. But what is it like being the older guy in that crew as like the kind of like the elder statesman yeah uh it's um i don't even th because these kids are kind of fucking like tough kids they like they make me feel younger th than them almost sometimes because they're just like no i don't want to do that or like whatever i'm like come on like yeah do it you know like within skateboarding especially like you just fit in it does there's no age i don't think i mean there is but like i could be out skating with tyshawn and then like you know, like Alex Olson's dad, like could be out skating with us. You never right. know. So it's like, I don't know. It's just, I just, I feel like a big brother. I try to like keep them in, like, I know about skating and shit. So I kind of like, I'll be like, Hey man, maybe you shouldn't do that or whatever. Like kind of like whatever, but they do what they want. So they're, they're pretty with it. I, the only thing that I can tell is that like, I'm turning 40 next year. So I, uh, my I can tell like skating around is like, ta it takes a little more effort yeah. to like, you know what I mean? Like I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, that is something that is cause they're still really young and sometimes it'll be like hard to keep up with them. And it's like funny enough, like I film long lens a lot now. Like that's like my thing. Like I just mm -hmm. like, I like how it looks cause it almost feels like you're there, right. you know, other than fisheye. But like I, in a weird way, I'm like, am I filming long lens? Cause I just can't keep up with them fisheye, like, you know, rolling with them. But I just, I can tell that, that that's the difference. And like, I, you know, I try to take care of myself so much now, like eating right and try to like, especially when I'm in LA, I like do hikes and stuff. And like that, that's, I can, that makes me feel like better, like about like being able to like do, do skating and shit, but. Speaking of someone that has managed to stay in shape and keep up with those kids, what is it like working with the Gons? Dude, the Gons, Cause funny he, enough, cause he is, is like he's like, fucking got so much strength and still so tough. And like he like he's still doing it like for real. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Which is amazing. But he ha I feel like he has to live up to it at this point. Like he's got he's the he's the dude that. Whenever he's like gone, he's going to be the fucking the one like there's going to be he's the fucking best skateboarder ever. Like it's not about skill, which he has tons of it. It's just that his whole deal is, is 
it's he's got so much personality and he is unknowing and he's just a real he's the real deal yeah you know? I, I did an interview with him like almost two years ago now uh-huh. and it was around here like it was at like an art store around the corner yeah and uh dude meet me at this art store literally oh, yeah. yeah like and 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 we afterward it was like well let's go get a slice of pizza and so i'm literally like i'm walking up i think it was prince or something or not prince i was walking up toward prince and i'm thinking like oh my god like i'm walking and mark gonzalez is skating the street like just kind of like surfing around yeah. basically as he does like because he's a wild card yeah and we skated we're going to prince street pizza so we walk right past supreme uh-huh. there's like a line of kids around the corner and this is like i think this was literally the drop for like that the rainbow hoodie with yeah. the butterfly that he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not a single kid in the line. Like no, you were saying, no. there's nobody that stopped. There's nobody that was like, holy, holy shit, he made the basketball that I've been waiting 10 hours to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, people... I think people that's what that, Cherry is kind of for, is to make sure that those kids that are waiting in line are like, oh, that's, well, that's the guy. Well, Cherry is... The fact that like me and Dill and Gons and then all these kids came into play and like and we all worked together on something and it wasn't like stressful. It wasn't like you need to do this. It, I mean, yeah, at times I was like, come on, like, let's go skate. You know what I mean? We got to be out. But those kids were just kind of rolling around and they would they come to New York and come over to my crib and kick it like they were just like, you know, they're just cool. But uh, I think that that was like a great promotional tool and it was cool to let people know like we're we're in skate we're skating yeah, it's, you know? a skate it's a brand skate still. fucking brand you know and i don't know it all came together at the right time i think so i think in a way james was definitely smart by like letting us do it and then you know another thing that was fucking dope about james is that, that they didn't make me change anything like i handed it in it was approved and we were that on you know it was like there was no like change this. I don't like this. It was like, it was just good, you know. It was and just then you had enough good. footage for a second video with it too. Uh, I didn't have enough foot. I used every single thing that we filmed for that video. Really, and so then it was just like clear it all it, out. Like, and be like literally, I had like maybe a couple things, but like nothing that I would have used. So like I le- no leftovers. It was that we put that out, and well, that well, that was uh. In fact, I think maybe while I was editing that or right after I got done editing that, I was already filming with Sean and Sage already and we made another video like four or five months later and put it online. Wow. And it was a joyride and and, uh, it was sick. They just were so hyped off the video coming out and they were just like, let's keep going. So they just were around and we just kind of filmed that and got, you know, everyone in it again and that was like a good little thing that came out after I was yeah, really, I was really say, happy like, with that. Cause joyride kind of almost felt like a sequel or like what I thought was like, Oh, there's definitely enough in, in the tank to put out a second video. Yeah, No, that was all filmed after. Wow. Yeah. And it was just, they were like so hyped off the, like what had come out and they were just like, so, and I think that was like, it came out in March and I think whatever, like five or six months later that that came out. So we just filmed like every day after that came out, I think we were all hyped, you know, it yeah. got a lot of, you know, got a lot of press and, and like, of course those kids are probably, you know, they were fucking probably so psyched. They're like, a movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's, so, it's a cool feeling. Yeah. And, and I, they, they I had like big pro skaters, like being like, dude, you're fucking sick. Like, yeah. you know, so that's like the coolest thing ever. And, and I have a, this is kind of a trivia question almost, but what's the story of the backdrop that you use in your apartment? Cause that's not even in your apartment anymore, right? Like, no, that is a photo from my, that was, a uh, um, that I lived on canal street in a mm. room with no windows. And that had this, it was like industrial kind of looking. There was like a pipe that went around the whole room and it was just like, whatever. I like just didn't even like work that much. And I kind of just was like floating and I had this room and, uh, and, on that pipe, I used to change the things around. Like, I'd have stuff in my room. Oh, I like this picture. I'd put it up there. It was just, like, something to, like, look at. Like, like when I was, like, leaving. Us. Yeah, it was, like, when I leave, I would, like, see it or whatever. It was just, like, this thing. And then, uh, and people used to always just come visit me. And I'd be, like, oh, stand there. Let me take a photo of you there. And, like, whatever. It was kind of, like, that it was kind of, like, my thing, I guess. I don't know. It was just something to do when I was just sitting at home doing nothing, basically. And then when I moved into my new apartment... Uh, I had a photo of that 
wall and a friend of mine uh my friend ruba was like you should keep doing taking photos you know of that and i was like oh maybe like whatever and i was like thinking about it and i looked at like my apartment that i have i have like two there's these two lights like like you know like switched on lights and uh it's like dang it would be kind of sick to like have that photo blown up and put right there so it, it it for me it is nothing other than if somebody comes over kick it or like take a photo and you know people got get real fun with it so like they would just like i had like eventually like during film and cherry it like got crazy like we were like i had wigs we had props yeah, like, yeah. it was there's just that, getting real that, fun like everyone was like skate crew photo yeah everything. yeah it was like everyone like you know we'd go on my roof and kick it and then everyone be like dude let's take a photo like all right let's all go downstairs like whatever it's something for fun but for me personally, it's just a timeline for me. Like if I move out of this place, whatever, I might not even do it anymore, but I'll know like that time period that I lived on 4th Street that this is, you know, that represented that time for me. Just like, you know, Love Park footage represents like a lot of the time I was in Philly. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's just a timeline thing for me. I, I don't, it's nothing serious. It never has been. It's really nothing. It's just for fun. And and this is a... Uh... This is, I think, I the pr- previous time that I did something that involved you was uh, my co-host, who's not here today, Madrell, came over to your place in East Village, yeah, and and did an essentials thing where he came over and yeah. interviewed there, and I wanted to know what um, what was the movie or movies that got you into filmmaking because I from that interview I remember you you really like Dennis Hopper, yeah, right? Hopper is the man. In fact, they just had like. There's the the uh, Metrograph Theater that's over on Ludlow, mm-hmm. which uh, which at first when I went there I was like oh, I hate this place. It's just like trying to be like hip and shit, like whatever. It's just like too like too cool, right? Like, you know what I mean? Reclining but seats. It, it was just like whatever, just whatever. But then they started, you know, they started playing fucking dope movies. You know what I mean? I was like I can't even hate, like you know what I mean? But they did. The, the they did a document there's a documentary that just came out on Dennis Hopper um that was really cool but they they premiered it there and the dudes that made it like were there to like host it and and then they did like a week long thing of Hopper movies and so every, every time every time there's like a Hopper thing I'll go see it I even if I've seen it like out of the blue that movie I've seen probably like fucking 10 times in the theater like I would be like I was out in SF once on a skate trip and I drove by this theater and I, I said, Dennis Hopper, out of the blues playing just tonight only. I, I got out of the van. I was like, I'll, I'll meet you guys at the hotel later. Went and saw it. Like shit like that. Alone? I get, uh, no, actually Sean, uh, Sean Pablo went with me. He was like, I want to see it. Let's go. And like the Perfect. other dudes kept driving, you know, they left, but I just get inspired by why it doesn't matter if I've seen it. I always catch new things. And almost weirdly enough, I always catch new things in that movie every time I see it in the theater. It's like, wow, I didn't even know, like, you know, like, whatever. You just see things and little things inspire me, you know, to do stuff. But Dennis Hopper did such a cool job for when he was making films, like, he was doing shit like you know like not like everyone else at all it was like, it was amazing so what was that like when you got to like meet neil young who had worked on movies with it him? was cool cuz neil young was really fucking cool the crazy thing is like neil would have kept talking we had 30 minutes with him cuz he was like making actually making a documentary for the album that he uh that he was making there was like a whole, whole another camera crew there filming that mm-hmm. So they stopped that for like, I think they were like, you have 20 minutes. So we like interviewed him and literally he would have kept rambling. Like he was so fucking like down to just keep talking. And his like manager was like, all right, you guys, this time's up, you know, but like it was pretty crazy. He was super fucking cool. Uh, that's one thing about Supreme that I love that, we, you know, we get to do stuff like that you know which you're like you know you get to interview him and like you can interview Pettybone, like yeah get interview you know larry clark and you know you get to do shit outside of skating that i remember that one video is like david blaine like there's so yeah. many like, yeah there's just so they many did the thing with david blaine harmony did that yeah that was that was rad but like it's just like it reaches so much farther than skating and like yeah we might be the skate aspect in the company or whatever but we get to like be around other things that I really, truly like really want to, you know, crack into at some point, you know what I mean? So it's sick to like 
first of all, get to meet people that you would never have got, you know, yeah. get to meet Neil Young, get to meet all these people and, and, and just kick it with them for a little bit, which is, it's rad, you know? Like, that's another thing about even making skate videos for Supreme. Like, it reaches fucking so many people that don't skate. You know what I mean? Like, kids that just like Supreme will watch the video because they want to see it. You yeah. know what I mean? And that, to me, is the best part about it. You know, it's like, like... one in every ten kids that ends up hitting play on that might actually yeah, end like, up skating. I mean, I feel like everyone fucking sees them. At least checks it out. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, you want to see what Supreme's going to put out. You know what I mean? So, I'm sure, like... I mean, I got, like, such crazy feedback from Cherry. Like, all these different fucking people were hitting me up. Like, dude, that's the fucking sickest skate video. Like, you know, people that don't skate, you know? Like, I'm, like, sick. I'm glad that, like... It translated. I'm glad that there was enough personality shit to keep through without the skating that to keep somebody that doesn't skate's attention on the video, you know? Yeah. So, like, you know, Dill and Gons and, like, this and that. Like, those dudes talking and, like, whatever. It kept, like... You know, when those, like, it's funny when those, like, squatter bike dudes go by and Dill's like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, you know what I mean? I feel like you could be anyone and find that funny. You know what I mean? Like, the, the crackhead lady that pulls her shirt off. There's, yeah. like, the, there's so much random yeah. like, in between. That's, you know, I love that shit more than skating. You know what I mean? I love capturing that, like, and coming across something. Like I said, it ain't a movie. This shit ain't planned out. You come across that, you're like, I got gold on tape, you know? So, yeah. like, it's like, I like that shit just as much as I like skating. And skating's hard, man. Like, getting yeah. a trick takes days. Like, it doesn't take, like, oh, we got a trick in a fucking 20 minutes. Like, you might go to a place fucking four, five times out of the week trying to get that, getting kicked out. Just or, getting it's slammed. Not, it's just like, it's, that's the hard part, you know? The it's fun r running into people, you know, and like people trying to, ca trying to capture them and trying to get something like I'll pull out my camera and film stuff and like film somebody talking for like mad long and might not get anything. There's, that one there's always it. like one thing in there that you're like, that was sick. Like while you're filming it in my head, I'm like, dude, that was so sick. He just said that, like, you know, or something like that shit. It speaks in volumes. Like when me. they're at, when they're at the courthouse and then you're just filming the security guard for like, while he's like picking his nose and yeah, fidgeting yeah. for just like, shit like that, man, that, that's that's the best part about about this, you know. And so, what have you got coming up next? Are you working on? Anything I'm working right now? on a full length right now for Supreme. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, and is there a timeline? What's, what's the? Uh, there is. There's no like crazy deadline. Actually, somebody just took a photo on the new Thrasher of the first ad for it. There's no. There's no name yet either. So we're still. I'm still like. TBD. It, yeah, there's no name yet, and I'm still trying to figure it out, but we're working on another full length instead of, like, another online video. So the last video we did was, well, the last video I did was the Paris video, uh, Pussy Gangster, so, which came out really well. I'm psyched on that. And, uh, that yeah, we, we, caught that with the the we, caught, we caught the dude with the dude with the dude with the knife at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, which was fucking insane. Like, how do you just come across that? You know what I mean? Like, dude's trying to tag a bunch of skaters with a knife because he was pissed off. Homeless dude. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know when it's going to come out, but we're working on it. I, obviously, you guys haven't, you know, anybody that's listening to this hasn't seen a skate video from Supreme. Like, really? Yeah. They've all been like done by somebody else because i'm working on this really nice so yeah and and we usually like to end on this kind of question where it's like if you could give one piece of advice to 13 year old bill strobeck in syracuse before the ged before philadelphia yeah. what would it be it would be watch old look back at all the stuff from the past old skate videos and stuff are fucking amazing still like i literally watch Tim and Henry's and uh, H Street videos and early Plan B, Plan B videos like uh, Virtual Reality and Questionable. I watch all that shit to inspire me for now, you know? And I think that shit is like gold because back then skate videos just like came out and like your friend had it and everyone would go to his house and exactly. watch it. But nowadays it's like dudes are just filming and posting it online every day. It's like it's cool but it's like it's kind of bland but all, all that old shit was like shit that they took time to make like a couple years and or whatever and those videos are just fucking dope and skaters were dope back then because no one likes skaters so they yeah. were fucking like what they were you know and they were hash 
They were just like, like like outcasts, you know, and that is cool. And the skateboarding needs that now so much, you know, and yeah. I literally remember it changing. I remember getting Baker 3 for Christmas and like literally everybody came over to watch it because it was like I was the only one that had a DVD. But but that's even with Cherry, it was like I didn't, I was like, we got to make a hard copy and, 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 you know, I just wanted it to have that feel. In fact, no one in the video saw their the footage or the video until they were at the premiere, which like to me that was like going to your friend's house and watching the video. You know what I mean? So I think that like adds a lot more to it. You know, like you don't know what you're gonna get. You guys filmed a bunch of shit. You don't know what everyone else has. You don't like, know the soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a surprise. So uh, yeah, I, I I think if I could give any advice, it's like try to do your own thing. Don't bite anyone if you want to bite people do it for a little bit but then find try to you know try to find your own niche and do something a little different and and people will recognize that and i only know that from experience you know it's like when i made my own video and put it online is when everyone was starting to like oh shit like i want to see more from this dude and i think it was like you know and everyone needs a job too you know so like of course like at first i was like doing that but there was a point where i was just like dude if I'm going to continue doing this, then it's got to be my way, you know? And, uh, I just think like, you know, all that old, all that old shit in the past is like real fucking sick. Like look back on that stuff. Cause it'll change. It'll help you out with what you're making now without a doubt. Like it, all that old footage and outcasty shit was really fucking sick. So, Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much for finding some time. Thank you for trekking through the snow. Yeah, Thank man. you for talking it out, man. All Literally, right. open invite if you ever want to come back. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Sitting down. All right.